What comes after the end? I don't know. Neither did they. They were just an army engineer battalion, constructing roads and bridges deep in the middle of the Arizona nowhere. They didn't know why Armageddon had come. They'd heard radio chatter about an attack on some space-based missile platform. But who had attacked it, or why? No one knew. What they did know is that the politicians and the generals had finally ended the world. Now, everything was gone. They took over a federal prison for a fort, kicked out the convicts, got busy starting from scratch. Maybe it was an act of mercy. Maybe they figured that the prisoners would die out in the harsh new world. Whichever, it came back to bite the engineers in the ass. Cultists, criminals, cannibals. They've been living with the fallout ever since. Good people had survived too, called for help in the night. And those engineers, those common soldiers, could not stand by and see them die. So they came out of their fort and they helped the survivors defend their homes. And for that, they earned a new name, a proud name, the Desert Rangers. Now, Rangers, I know at times it seems our cause is hopeless, and I know it's hard to say goodbye to a brother in arms. But I want you to know something else, that no Ranger who dies in the line of duty will ever be forgotten. Nor will he have ever died in vain or unavenged. Thank you, recruits. I appreciate you coming to Captain Ace's retirement party when you hardly knew the man. Appropriate, too, seeing as how investigating his death will be your first duty as a Desert Ranger. Ace had been trying to locate a faint radio signal, which has lately been giving us cause for concern. We gave him three repeater units and sent him to hook him up to three remote radio towers. This would have allowed us to get a fix on the signal. But sadly, Ace was murdered by unknown assailants right after hooking up the first tower, and his logbook and the last two repeater units were stolen. Yeah, I know. You've hardly found your feet with us, and here I am sending you on a mission that already got one ranger killed. Well, I wish I had another option, but the Desert Rangers are spread a little thin right now. Ranger teams Abel and Charlie are out west trying to stop a range war out there from becoming straight up genocide. And Team Baker is up north looking for a way through the radiation that's cut us off from Vegas. I'm afraid the next generation is going to have to lead the charge on this one. The voice on those broadcasts disturbed me greatly. It talked crazy talk about a future where man and machine would be one. Worse, it talked about us, the Desert Rangers, specifically. It said it was coming for us. When you get back to the Citadel, talk to our radio expert, Wade Woodson, if you want to know more about the technical details. All I know is the repeaters will upgrade the towers and allow us to zero in on the mystery signal. 
I'll give you the locations of the towers once you have the repeaters in hand. More important to find them first. Don't know, but it wasn't on Ace's person when he was found. Look for it. It might have some clues as to his death. The mission is this. Search the area where Ace's body was found and do your best to recover his logbook and the repeater units. Then call in your report. If you find the repeaters, I may send you on to finish his mission. Ace's death must be avenged, and it will be. But finding the signal he died trying to track down is just as important. Besides, I got the sneaking suspicion that when you find the one, you'll find the other. It's about a day's walk east from here. I'll mark it on your map. There you go. Yes, call in on your radio. Your radio is your lifeline to Ranger Citadel. We'll be calling you with alerts and updates on your current missions and sending you new missions when we receive distress calls. As Rangers, it is your sworn duty to respond to those calls. That is the contract we made with the people of Arizona when we opened for business. Once you prove yourself, the Citadel will be your new home. Consider this mission the final test of your training. If you succeed, you are welcome within our walls. If you fail, then you aren't cut out to be a Desert Ranger, and we won't let you in. You using logic on me, eh? Smartass. Logic and observation will change some folks' minds, and you can catch people in lies that way. But sometimes, it only makes them mad, so be careful. In this case, you're right. I should let you in, but I got a feeling about you four. You got depths you don't even know you have, and it's gonna take adversity to tap them. So I'm sending you out undergunned and unprepared, just to see what it brings out of you. You'll thank me later. Eh, maybe. Good luck out there, recruits.
Echo One. Mind picking up that can over there for me? Think there's some water in there. <laughs> he headbutted you right in the butt. God damn it, Ace. You never should have put down the wrench and picked up the gun. Sorry about the waterworks. I'm still pretty broke up over Ace. I'm Angie. You kids must be the new recruits old Vargas trained up. Lord, y'all just babies. They all hurt, but this one... Man. Ace wasn't even a ranger. Not at first. He worked as a driver and mechanic for Fair and Brigo up in Vegas. And when Base Cochise started sending its death machines into the desert, Brigo sent Ace South to recruit robot fighters. We met him in courts. He'd pissed somebody off out there and they'd locked him up. We sorted that out, and he started running with us, helping us fight Cochise. He never stopped. Vargas eventually gave him the uniform and the hat, but I don't think he ever formally signed on. He was just always there. And now he's... he's... God damn it, Ace. I knew this one was trouble. I knew it. <laughs> Better than he'd like. Back in the day, the General was the craziest of us all. But somehow, after he brought down Base Cochise, he became the sanest. Now he's running the whole show doing a damn fine job. Well, I'm still walking patrols and answering radio calls. Shows you how much ambition I got, huh? Sorry, but you are. As cute as little kittens. Y'all remind me of us. Snake, Razor, Thrasher, and me. Back when we were just starting out. 
thinking we were gonna save the world for the future. Thinking none of us would ever die. I... Christ, sorry. Don't listen to me. Youth is good. Optimism is good. If we all started out worn out and jaded like me, nobody'd ever try to change the world. So you kids go ahead and give it a go. Maybe it'll work this time. Man, not sure I can recall. Haven't been out that way in ages. Don't even know if it's still on the map. Ask Thrasher, he'd know. He was working on the same thing Vargas has you working on. Trying to track down radio signals from beyond the edges of the map. All seemed a bit boring and scientific to me. But then Ace started saying he thought someone was following him. I asked him to let me come with him when I met him at Rail Nomads to give him the repeater units. But he told me to go back to base. He said he was just jumping at shadows because those radio broadcasts had spooked him. Should have gone with him. Why didn't I go with him? Could be a nice little place. The Atchisons and Topekans would kiss and make up. I can't even remember what it's all about. But between them, they got enough old railroad tech that if they worked together, they could give this area a real transportation system. Instead, it seems like all they want to do is blow each other's heads off. Idiots. Ace played me some of them before he died. Hard to make out a lot of it, but what I heard made my hair stand on end. Some guy talking about turning men into machines. Or machines into men or some shit. But the crazy thing was, then he starts talking about us. The Rangers. Saying we're the cause of all the trouble in the world. And we need to be wiped out so his glorious future can be born. I mean, who is this guy? Where is he? What the fuck does he have against us? Say, listen. Vargas asked you to look into Ace's death because he thought I was too upset to be professional about it. He didn't want me going off half-cocked and shooting up all of Arizona looking for his killer. But I gotta find this guy. Ace and me, well, we'd been fighting side by side for nigh on 20 years. I'm not letting him die unavenged. So, well, I know it's going against orders, but if you let me tag along and be in at the kill, well, I'll help you find your feet out there. Maybe give you a few pointers along the way. I may be old and slow, but I know the waist's like the back of my hand. What do you say? Cool. No need to tell Vargas why I joined you. If anybody asks, I'm just helping you get oriented, all right?
Echo, this is Ranger Command. Come in. Roger, Echo One. Just making sure your radio is working. I'll be your dispatcher from here on out. I also wanted to give you a little heads up on your water situation. If you've all got full canteens, you should have enough water to reach the place where Ace died with plenty to spare. But if you're going to go exploring, you'll want to fill up again at any oasis you can find. Remember, your main priority is to recover the repeater units Ace was carrying. Once you've got the devices, you'll be headed to Ag Center and High Pool to install them. But we'll talk about that after you acquire the repeaters. We must, of course, bring Ace's killers to justice. But right now, that's secondary to discovering the location of that signal. It is vital that all teams stay in radio contact with me here at the base. We get distress calls from all over our jurisdiction and sometimes beyond. Towns or farms or mines being attacked by raiders, mutant beasts, what have you. We field those calls here and then dispatch whichever team is closest to the problem. Until now, Woodson's been our dispatcher, but Ace's death made me realize I've spent too many years in my office, walled off from the world and how it's changing. I need to know what's going on out there, and I figure the best way to do that is to start listening to the people's problems. So, I've decided that from now on, I'll be the one fielding calls and talking in your ear when you head out into the wastes. Don't let that make you self-conscious or nothing. Ten four Echo One, carry on. Ranger Command out.
If anybody can hear this, come at once. Don't know how long we can hold it. Ranger Citadel, this is Ag Center. Come in. We're under attack. The plants, they're, they're mutating out of control. They're tearing my people apart. Ag Center, this is Citadel Base. Can you repeat? Did you say the plants were attacking? Yes, goddammit, the plants! Something's gone wrong with the... Oh, ah, the door! They're breaking down the door! Fall back! Fall back! Ranger Team Echo, this is Ranger Command. Come in. Did you copy those distress calls from High Pool and Ag Center? Over. Roger that. Listen, Echo One, I have no one else in the area and no further intel at this time. I'm afraid it's going to have to be your decision which call to respond to first. Whichever one you choose, get there ASAP. Both situations are emergencies, and both sounded like they were deteriorating rapidly. While the repeaters are still alpha-level priority, civilian emergencies have to come first before heading back out to get the repeaters. Sending you the coordinates for both locations now. Copy. Uh-huh. Suspicious, isn't it, Echo One? Like someone's monitoring our transmissions and trying to stop our little radio experiment before it starts. Keep an eye out for suspect characters. Copy. 10-4, Echo One. This is Ranger Citadel. Come in. Over. 10-4, Echo One. Just got a call from the Level Lupe mine. They've got some men trapped in a cave-in and need some help getting dynamite down to the collapse. Apparently, some of the old tunnels are infested with creepy crawlies. Get over there as quick as you can. You'll know how long those men can hold out. Copy? 10-4, Echo One. Sending you the coordinates now. Ranger Citadel out. <laughs> 